Hey, what's going on there, guys? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this Saturday, April 15th, 2023. It's about 10.55 a.m. here on this beautiful Saturday morning in California. It's supposed to be 75 degrees here where I live, so perfect temperature, I would consider. Latest earthquake shows, uh, let's see what we got here, 1.3 into the Southern California area. The uh, latest earthquake on the globe. We did have some activity out here in the Southeast Indian Ocean with a 5.9 and a 4.8 coming in earlier this morning out here into some of the uh, uh, divergent, divergent boundaries and also some rift zones up here. Uh, got this area slowly drifting apart. A little bit of earthquake activity striking within this region today. Again, this 5.9 coming in. It looks like about 8 o'clock this morning, just shy of the 6.0 threshold. Uh, before we jump into that, I want to kind of show something here at Yellowstone. Some weird signature, I would say. Um, it kind of looks like earthquake activity, uh, and then in a way it kind of doesn't. So I'm not for sure exactly what's going on here, uh, but it's taking place around the, looks like the little West Thumb area borehole in the Grant Village region. Notice that signature showing up across a good portion of the seismograph stations even some of these ones farther away but the epicenter of water whatever's going on here looks to be centered uh, roughly around little west thumb and it's going to be this signature right here a lot of times we'll get a large cluster of earthquakes that look like one solid signature such as what you would see in say perhaps magma movement but uh, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it's going to be magma movement, but it's definitely a weird signature uh, taking place. I'm guessing this is a, just a bunch of little earthquakes, uh, or I should say moderate earthquakes taking place in a short amount of time. Um, the only earthquake that's showing up here this morning is a 1.9 in the Yellowstone area from the USGS at... Um, Let's see here, 1553 UTC time. So 1553 is going to be roughly within this area, but I guarantee you that's, that's just not one earthquake. It's a little bit larger than the magnitude that they're throwing out there as well uh, for this to show up across a good portion of the park. Um, so it looks like, uh, looks like potentially maybe a start of a swarm. Hard to say right now. It, it did just kick up here in the last couple hours. There's that um, signature here. And uh, followed up by quite a few spikes. That's typical during a swarm, but whatever this first reading is, it's just a little odd. It kind of looks like a long duration earthquake, uh, so to speak. I don't think it's magma movement, uh, but sometimes that's what magma movement does look like. It kind of starts off as a long duration type of event but uh yeah just kind of keeping an eye on it seeing uh seeing what's going on either way a little bit of interesting activity here at yellowstone national park this morning as we get further away from this epicenter area it kind of looks like maybe a couple separate earthquakes here but again really close together yellowstone has been known to uh, have these earthquake swarms on occasion where they just come in with a bang and then they slowly uh, mellow out a little bit but uh, definitely a lot more than just one earthquake and a little bit larger than the 1.9 that's being shown here across the USGS map and again these these seismograph stations are taken from the University of Utah this is just a simple layout here from this site it's called is this thing on org for any specific individual um, website that you want to check out you would have to go to the uh, um, University of Utah site and zoom in here this is the official government education site uh, you would have to click on these seismograph stations here to uh, see the exact same thing but I kind of like the uh, layout here that's being provided with the um, uh, this website here is this thing on org slash Yellowstone slash day thumbs. Pretty cool. All right. So we'll keep an eye on that throughout the day today. See if uh, it turns in, into a good swarm or not. West Coast. Uh, well, we've got activity. Not a whole lot above 2.5. In fact, 
nothing above 2.5 um, for the magnitudes. Most of this earthquake activity here listed on the map. 64 earthquakes in California right now over the last 24 hours. All microquakes. I'm not noticing any major swarming going on. Uh, no unusual activity to pinpoint today. It just looks like your typical regions being hit with uh, some very small microquake activity. Across the rest of the country, things very quiet for now. A um, little bit of movement outside of the Pecos, Texas area. I believe that was from... Uh, uh, yesterday. It's the day the 14th or the 15th. Yeah, it's the 15th. Man, it doesn't feel like it. It's been a long winter. It still feels like winter out here in California. All right, let's see here. One earthquake up into... This is from yesterday. All this activity is actually from yesterday. Um, let me see what else we got here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Looks like a little bit of newer quake activity. Of at least a four. In the mix of the older movement quakes here. The white rings are going to be the newer earthquake activity. And the red rings indicating the older movement there from yesterday. So definitely seeing, uh, looks like still a little continued activity today across the Middle America Trench. Uh, down south into the Chile area. Looks like some newer activity as well. But uh, some smaller quake activity in the 3 range. USGS only showing one earthquake here uh, from early this morning, just after midnight, a 4.4 deep underneath the Argentina area at 176 kilometers deep there into the Peru Chile Trench. Up into the Alaska region. Looks uh, about the same. Very typical on any given day here. A uh, little scattered on the 2.5 map. Only a couple smaller quakes here across the area. Most of the movement all in the microquake range again. Uh, similar to California. Uh, taking place there in Alaska. Alright, uh, let's see what we got here along the Kuro Kamchaka Trench. The northern end here showing a little bit of activity. In the low 4 range, 4.304 kilometers deep. And that was followed up about an hour later by another deeper movement quake um, into the extreme northern end here of that trench uh, with a 4.3, 150 kilometers deep. So watch this area, folks. We keep mentioning this uh, region for a potential large earthquake. It's, uh, I would say it's definitely overdue. It's got quite a bit of accumulated slip right here. Doesn't take a whole lot of time uh, to build up strain in this area and that's up here um, north of the Japan Trench. This whole area uh, very high accumulated slip rate. Certain areas have a little bit higher than the 83 mm per year. This is just an average in this area. Kind of a map I put together uh, with the slip rate along subduction zones. Alright, uh, let's see further down south. Uh, let's see, looks like we've got a little bit of further activity here into the Java Trench. Still got a pretty good cluster of earthquake activity here uh, in the region. Uh, there's a 5.5 that kicked off in the region that did see the earthquake yesterday. A little bit further north, or well, I should say west. I keep picturing north here because the trench does run north here around the Andaman Sea. So 7.0 coming in yesterday, the Java Sea area, very deep movement. And then the latest quake here looks like a 5.5, relatively shallow. So we are noticing some more shallower earthquake movement along the Java Trench. I still think there's possibility of seeing some larger scale activity here uh, following yesterday's deep movement quakes across the Java Trench. So continue to watch that. This could just be a little... Um, little telltale sign there of some impending uh, stress in the area. Uh, definitely a whole bunch of twos across the in Indonesia area and south of the Philippines. Very typical there of um, plate stress in the region. Down into the... Never fails, right? <laughs> Never fails. 5.9, 4.8 down here into the... Um, well, the Southwest Indian Ridge, it's um, a couple different fracture zones out here. Kind of looks like a zipper unzipping the entire oceanic crust somewhat, if you want to picture it like that. Either way, a uh, couple different divergent boundaries out here, separation of the seafloor. They've seen a 5.9 
and it uh, looks like a 4.8 just moments prior to that 5.9 so a little bit of foreshock activity occurring there earthquakes don't get too big out here in the uh, divergent boundaries uh, let's see what see what we got for historical data it's very active though we do see quite a bit of activity uh, in that area mostly fives to sixes it looks like some category up there around the sixes but i don't know if it reached into the sevens or not here um, but yeah very active in terms of uh, typical earthquake activity here in the uh, southwest indian ridge uh, divergent zone all right uh, let's see what else we got across the area of uh turkey a couple twos up here it looks like looks like a little bit larger quake there in the mix let's see what we got for magnitudes there across the area um was there a four in there kind of oh, i guess i can use this map right here looks like a four yeah 4.4 coming in just after uh, two o'clock or so in the morning in the turkey area this is all getting Still quite a bit of aftershock activity in that area following the uh, large events there a month or so ago. A couple months now, I believe. Atlantic Ocean, fairly quiet. It's been awfully quiet out there in the Atlantic Ocean here recently. Just looking at Alaska, quite a bit of deeper movement up there. I know it, I know the uh, map here looks you know very typical on any given day here across the alaska region but some of this activity is super deep up here um just north here of the cook inlet around the volcano what is this volcano I'm not for sure how to pronounce that mount nick but uh definitely seen some deeper movement quake activity here across the subduction zone uh, and like similar to the Kurokam Chaka Trench, but with less accumulated slip rate, this area can see uh, quite a bit of large earthquake activity uh, within the subduction zone. Here's a little back building earthquake from yesterday, 3.4, 14 kilometers deep. The big island of Hawaii. Uh, looks like they're still having a little bit of earthquake activity, mainly around the Pahala area. No noticeable changes there across the volcano volcanoes there on the big island. Check out the HVO. Still no new updates across the area. Last one was put out here a couple days ago. Looks like they're just doing weekly updates unless something major changes there on the uh, big island. All right, uh, space weather activity getting um, pretty active. Got a little bit of flaring going on currently with the uh, global delayer absorption map. Let's see what we have here across the area. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't see any specific flaring currently taking place, but there is a couple different sunspots that we are watching that are currently facing the Earth, and they are growing and looking fairly dynamic. Um, this regional sunspot up here still looks like it's got fairly good potential of uh, producing a large flare. Also, back over here around the southwestern edge of the sun, although this area is... Uh, eventually going to be out of sight out of mind over here on the western limb of the sun will not be geo effective uh, once it reaches that point but we do have a fairly large regional sunspot uh, area that we need to watch and monitor in the coming days as this rotates into view looks like maybe a newer sunspot trying to develop right here but our main focus is going to be this area which is a uh, 3282 uh, and also this regional sunspot, which is kind of trailing across the southeastern limb of the sun. Uh, a couple areas within this region is uh, looking fairly active. Overall threat right now looks like 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 45, X flare around 5% or so. And um, yeah, looking pretty active here across the region. We don't have any uh, major coronal holes facing us. Just a couple smaller ones up on the northern and southern hemisphere. Won't be geo-effective here. Aurora forecast, fairly minimal. Not a whole lot going on currently, but hopefully that will change as we get these um, sunspots lined up. Maybe they'll produce a CME or two. 
All right, uh, Storm Prediction Center today has a, uh, well, an enhanced risk of severe weather across portions of northern Louisiana, Arkansas, stretching all the way up into Missouri. Uh, main threat today across this area of weather is going to be not tornadoes this time, but uh, mostly hail. Look at that hail threat, 30% chance. There's the uh, hatched area and the dashed line indicating uh, at least a 10% or greater probability of 2-inch diameter hail within, well, about 25 miles of a point. Uh, some of this hail could be rather large. I'm talking about baseballs falling out of the sky uh, within that hatched area. So the setup is definitely um, prime for some large hail here today across this area. So if you are around the Little Rock, Springfield, uh, even it looks like Longview, Texas there within that hatched area, um, keep your uh, keep your vehicles inside in the garage if you can or outside carport I, I notice a lot when I'm out there in Texas and Oklahoma when I'm storm chasing that uh, they're everywhere there's um, carports all over the place outside and uh, they're relatively inexpensive as well uh, can help you know protect your vehicle from that uh, damaging hell that does take place quite often out there in the um, in the plains and the Midwest area. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. No major severe weather threat currently coming up. It looks as though day six, which is going to be um, on Thursday into Friday of next week, there's at least already a 15% chance of severe weather, uh, mainly positioned over Arkansas. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. It can change, but the Storm Prediction Center recently has been kind of issuing these long-term outlooks and uh you know a lot can change in a period of a few days so we'll check back on that as time gets closer uh, to that area Alrighty, uh let's see i do have a couple of yellowstone stations here keyed up there's southern california barrett there's some earthquake activity down there kind of spiking that's outside of the um uh, San Diego area down south here roughly um, I think it's right around here so definitely some earthquake activity occurring as listed here on the map mostly smaller microquakes and it looks like that's what's going on there today across the Barrett station uh, Yellowstone Lake Yellowstone's right here I'm not seeing any earthquake activity currently taking place here uh, but just kind of monitoring that odd earthquake activity um, in the region there today uh, quick glance here at the Cobb Mountain area, much calmer here today compared to days past when they had that four-pointer. I think it was a 4.4 coming in there, a little bit of shaking being reported from that earthquake uh, due to hydrothermal operation uh, facilities out here in this area of Northern California. All right, folks, have a good day. I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to uh, go do some more yard work. I was hard at it yesterday, getting uh, the weeds down. It's been quite a winter here in California, so the weeds have managed to um, grow quite nicely. I love the greenery, but also at the same time, uh, the greenery will eventually dry out as we head into our dry months here in California. And I want to get a hold on any fire uh, potential hazards out here around the uh, property. So... Um, well, I love the greenery. It's got to come down here eventually, so might as well get it while it's green. That way it's a little bit less dusty and uh, the weather's somewhat cooler. A little bit easier on the body, right? Instead of 115 degrees out here trying to mow the field and uh, weed eat. So, all right, I'm going to get to work. Have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on. Take care. Stay safe. Enjoy your weekend.